Good morning, every. Good morning. <laughs> you can tell I haven't done this before. Good evening, everyone. The Lord be with you. Welcome to the Lord's house on this beautiful Thursday evening. It is a wonderful, glorious day in our church. If you paid any attention uh, to Facebook today, you saw Pastor Andrew out there with a whole devotion about Ascension Day, which is the day we are celebrating in our church today. It's the day we remember Jesus rising up to heaven and being installed as the Lord of all things. Um, of course, I am Pastor Ryan Anderson. I'm from Trinity in Vesper and St. John's in Siegel. Pastor Bell wanted me to let you know that he is doing very well. He thanks you all for your prayers, your concern, your gifts to him and his family. He is feeling healthy and looks forward to being back with you on Sunday. Um, and so you're stuck with me for tonight. And for that, I apologize dearly. But here we are. And so we begin our worship with our hymn of invocation, hymn 494.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God has gone up with a shout. The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand. Until I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He will shatter the kingdom of the dead and Israel. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God has gone up with a shout. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
Almighty God, as your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, ascended into the heavens, so may we also ascend in heart and mind and continually dwell there with him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading. The first reading appointed for this, the celebration of the ascension of our Lord, is from the book of Acts, the first chapter. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commands through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his suffering by many proofs, appearing to them during forty days and speaking about the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which, he said, you heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said these things, as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. We speak responsibly the words of Psalm 47, whole verse by whole verse. Clap your hands, all peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. To the Lord the most high is to be feared, the great King over all the earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He chose us. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing praises with a psalm. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shield of the earth belongs to God. He is highly exalted. The epistle reading appointed for this day is from Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus, beginning in the first chapter. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his great might, that he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, 
not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things under his feet, and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This is the word of the Lord. As you are able, I invite you to stand for the Alleluia and verse. According to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures and said to them, Thus it is written, that the Christ should suffer, and on the third day rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sin should be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you, but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he blessed them, he parted from them, and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him, and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and were continually in the temple, blessing God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. may be seated for the hymn.
the congregation may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. The text for our time in God's Word this evening is the epistle lesson that was read earlier, especially these words. And he put all things underneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Thus far our text. Today is a day that is arguably on par with Easter Sunday. Of course, we have been celebrating our Lord's resurrection these past 40 days, but this day, the ascension of our Lord, is the culmination of all of that celebration. Though we have filled this sanctuary with the cry, Alleluia, Christ is risen, we should arguably also fill this sanctuary on this day with an equally resounding, Alleluia, Christ is risen and ascended. Okay, we'll work on that. <laughs> the ascension is the climactic event of his victory parade, the end goal of all of the suffering, all of the heartache, all of the pain, all of the death that the Christ experienced in this world. He now has been enthroned in glory, and the lordship of Christ is for the benefit of his church. He is had over all things for his church, of which you are a part. Yet when we hear that Christ has all power, this is not automatically good news, especially if we are the ones who like to be in control. Yes, we are like James and John, who wanted to sit at Christ's right hand and his left in his glory. Jesus is enthroned above all creation, but maybe there's a little spot there for me. Our self-serving idolatry leads us to try to weasel just a little bit of the kingdom away from Jesus. You can be the Lord over all things, but just let me be the Lord of this. The law of this Ascension Day is that this will not be so. Christ is Lord of all, and you are Lord of none. The Christ rules all things, and we rule none of them. This is a warning to all of us who are tempted to drive our own plans, enact our own vision, and pad our own popularity in the name and for the sake of the ascended Christ. All things have been placed under his feet. All things. That includes that dark corner of your soul that you will not let him into. That includes the things from which you refuse to release your grasp. That includes the possessions and material goods which he has granted you as a stewardship, which we so colloquially say belong to us. Christ's ascension puts him upon the throne and us in worship beneath it. He rules today over all things, all the things. Christ's power over all things is also bad news for those who do evil. 
Christ's position as the Lord of heaven and earth means that he has the authority to judge both the living and the dead. He will slay the wicked with the breath of his mouth. If you participate in the wicked ways of this world, you should be very afraid of this powerful Christ. Those who align themselves with Satan by thought, word, and deed should rightly tremble at the feet of the ascended Lord. We know that we're all poor, miserable sinners. And so we stand beneath the throne of the one who has put all things underneath his feet. That includes the evil powers and authorities of this world. And here the ascension of Christ becomes great good news for us all. For Christ's rule is a rule of graciousness, which casts out Satan and any who would stand against his throne. Christ rules over his enemies, of whom we were the worst, but he rules us with grace. In baptism, we have been transferred from the tyranny of Satan to the lordship of Jesus. Christ protects us from the evil one and will ultimately deliver us from the powers of sin, death, and the devil. From the right hand of God, Christ will bring all things to their final completion and will reconcile all things to himself. His kingdom stretches from sea to sea and even to the ends of the earth. And on that last and final day, Christ's power over all things will be displayed for the world to see without a doubt. And all of the evil powers, Satan and his minions, will be forced to depart to their place. You have been given a spirit of wisdom and of revelation concerning these things. Through the word, the Spirit reveals that the Son was crucified and raised and enthroned for you. Through the word, the Spirit reveals that this Son is reigning over all things right now, protecting you from evil, bringing about his will on this earth, and ruling his church with the graciousness of his gospel. Through the word, the Spirit's power worked faith in your heart to believe and confess all of these things. Through the word, the Spirit reveals to you that this Christ will come again to bring all things to completion when his power will be displayed so that none shall doubt it. God's power is at work among us, dear Christians. God's power is at work in us, dear Christians. God's power is at work in you, my dear brother and sister. And God's power will be at work again in the future, even on that last and final day. We have been made Christ's own and now live under him in his kingdom, a kingdom which was established once and for all, this ascension day. Though the enemies of Christ continue to thrash and rage against him and his church, they cannot overpower the one who has made his enemies his footstool. That image, of course, is of a conquering ruler placing his feet upon the neck of his defeated enemy. Ascension Day is the day where a man, the second Adam, stands upon the neck of our old evil foe. God, our Father, has given the man, Jesus of Nazareth, authority over all things, including in this church, which is 
his body. And so in this way, Christ fulfills what the first Adam had failed to do. When God created the man and set him in the Garden of Eden, he put him in charge of the whole kit and caboodle. Every tree, every animal, every creeping thing that creeped along the earth. Adam was given dominion over all of God's creation, and he ruined it. Instead of blessing the world through his dominion, the first Adam brought the curses of sin and death into our existence. He failed to extend God's reign of grace into all things, and instead he brought God's judgment and curse upon it all. And so all things waited in eager anticipation of a second Adam, the one who would set all things aright. But when the second Adam emerged on the scene, things did not quite look as we might have expected. The one who John the Baptist acclaimed to be the Son of God was born a little baby in Bethlehem. He gave up all of the glory and all of the power which was rightly his from eternity and came down here to suffer hurt and want and hunger and thirst and pain. Certainly not what you would expect from the Lord God Almighty. And even worse, the second Adam was humiliated by being hung upon a cross and killed. The second Adam suffered the same punishment for sin that the first Adam did. And so he died for your sins and for mine. But things started to look much brighter when God raised his son Jesus from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Christ's resurrection was glorious, and so was Christ's ascension. It means that all things are subject to him. It means that the second Adam has fulfilled the gracious rule over creation that the first Adam failed to do. It means that Christ's lordship over all things is for the benefit of his bride, the church. At present, we don't yet see everything in subjection to him, but that day is coming. For there is a promise connected to the day of Christ's ascension. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. On that last and final day, Christ will finally squash all of his enemies and the enemies of his church. On that last and final day, when Christ comes again, you need not fear the working of Christ's power for it will work on your behalf. Christ is coming back for you. Christ rules over all things for you. From that high and exalted position, he is able to dispense all good gifts to you, his beloved children. From on high he gives you his word so that you might believe him and receive his salvation. From on high he gives you his body and his blood so that your sins might be forgiven and you might be strengthened in your faith. From on high he gives you his spirit so that you might be protected from all evil and be equipped with all spiritual good. For Christ's ascension is for you, dear Christian friend. And so, for us who are members in this body of Christ, take heart. 
on this high and holy day. You do not have to rule over the life that God has given you. Christ will handle that rule for you. You do not have to strike down the demons which rage around and inside of you. Christ has already defeated them by his death, his resurrection, and his ascension. You do not have to be in power. You don't even get to be in power. Christ rules over all, seated at the right hand of his Father, where he's going to come from again in glory to judge the living and the dead. So believe, my brothers and sisters, that the power of Christ is for you. And join the whole Christian church on earth as we boldly confess, Alleluia! Christ is risen and ascended! Okay, let's try that again. I say, Alleluia! Christ is risen and ascended. You say, He is risen and ascended indeed. Alleluia! Alleluia! Christ is risen and ascended! There we go. Amen. And now the peace of God, which surpasses all of our human understanding, will keep your hearts and your minds steadfast in the true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. As you are able, I invite you now to please stand and join your hearts and voices with me and all the Christians on earth as we confess our common Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, in the light of the world to come. Let us now pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, since your Son has gone out with a shout and the sound of a trumpet, ascended in triumph and seated at your right hand, so now open our lips to sing praises to our King, rejoicing and living in the truth that his victory is for us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our O Lord, your Son has commanded us to go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Bless the proclamation of your church that many may believe, be baptized, and be saved. Lord, in your mercy. Hear O oh Lord, your Son has ascended to sit at your right hand until you make his enemies his footstool. Fix our eyes on him, ruling in the midst of his enemies, that we may not fear them, but abide in his peace. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O oh Lord, since your Son will shatter kings when he executes judgment upon the nations, keep Joseph, Tony, and all of our leaders from acting in ways that will earn them his wrath. 
Bless them with wisdom to govern us in accord with your righteous will. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, as believers in your Son's name, we call upon you to deliver all who suffer in our midst from sickness of body and mind, especially Pastor Andrew. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, you created marriage in the Garden of Eden and blessed it with your many gifts. We give you thanks for all of those who are celebrating anniversaries this week. Keep them strong in their self-sacrificial love for one another, and draw them closer to one another, even as they each are drawn closer to you. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O Lord, keep us from hardness of heart and unbelief. Help us by your Spirit to believe the witness of those who saw your Son after he had risen, and to joyfully recline at his table today, eating his body and drinking his blood in a worthy manner. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we here remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Praising his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. For to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. As we prepare to receive the Lord's gifts, we first sing our offertory. Give thee but thine own, whate'er the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Receive now the blessing of your God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. We remain standing as you are able to sing our clothes. 